In 9.5, we are going to be talking about solving trigonometric equations. So when you are asked to solve a trig equation, we are looking for the angle measures on the unit circle that make that thing happen. Okay? Now we're going to have to use some techniques from algebra to get it ready to solve. Most of the time, these we want to have equal to zero. Um, so this one's kind of ready to go. And then you're going to look to see, uh, is there a way that I can manipulate that uh, using what I know about algebra? Well, what you notice, hopefully, is that both of these terms contain a cosine, which means it's factorable. Factoring, you know, if I have like two quantities equal to zero, it becomes easier to solve because I can split it apart. So let's take out a cosine. Now, if I take out a cosine from this term, I am only left with a tangent. And then when I take out a cosine from this term, don't forget, you need a negative 1 there. So that if you distribute it again, you better get what's right. Now, using the technique to factor means that we can split it apart and say the cosine of x equals 0 or the tangent of x minus 1 equals 0. So let's look what that means. Well, the cosine of x equals 0 kind of done for us. This one, let's take the one to the other side. So we're looking at two different things. Where is the cosine 0? And where is the tangent equal to 1? So remember, we're looking for an angle measure where the cosine is 0. We're looking for an angle measure where the tangent is 1. Now, if we look at the unit circle, and I'm going to bring in a little picture of the unit circle for a minute. Let's see stuff in here. Well, I thought I saw a circle and I was hopeful. There we go. Um, if we look at the unit circle, so just look with me for a minute. Uh, remember that the uh, cosine is our x's sine is our y's, but our tangent is y over x. So remember that the tangent here is 0, the tangent here is square root of 3 over 3, the tangent here is 1, the tangent here, sorry about that, is square root of 3. And the tangent here is undefined. So really, if you know that, remember, everything kind of repeats itself from the first quadrant. And the only thing that happens as we go here, here, and here is the signs change. So if you know that pattern uh, is 0, square root of 3 over 3, 1, square root of 3 over 3, undefined, it's going to happen this way here, and this way here, and this way here. So that pattern is going to repeat itself. So if we look at this one right here, since we were talking about tangent, let's look at that one. Where is the tangent of 1 between 0 and 2 pi? Well, the tangent is positive here is equal to 1. And because that would be a negative over a negative, there is equal to 1. So the tangent's positive, remember, here and here. The tangent's negative there and there. Okay. So the answer would be pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4 for this one. So we're looking for the angle measure that makes that happen. Now this one, where is the cosine equal to zero? Do you, do you notice how this has a little bracket on it? Um, it's a bracket meaning include zero, but we don't have to include two pi. Well, the only place that the cosine is zero, that's, or there's two places where the cosine is zero, are x value, pi over two and three pi over two. So that's our answer, pi over two, four, three pi over two. So you might get multiple answers for these. Um, in this case, there were two places that the uh, cosine was 0, pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. And uh, there were two places where the tangent was 1, pi over 4 or 5 pi over 4. Now, just like any equation, if you plug either of those values or either of these values into the original spot uh, and put it into a calculator, make sure it's in radians, you should get zero. So there's our first example. Let's look at our second example. 
Now, unlike the last one where we had two distinct trig functions, one was a tangent, one was a cosine, here we only have a sine. So in that case, we have some nice things that can happen. We're going to bring the signs to one side, the numbers to the other. So I'm going to add a sign to both sides, moving the sign to the left. And I'm going to subtract a square root of 3 from both sides. So what I get is 2 sine of x equals negative square root of 3. And then I'm just going to divide by 2, so I get sine of x equals negative square root of 3 over 2. Well, if we look at that unit circle again, I think we're going to need this multiple times here. So if you have that paper on your you know, uh, um, if you've taken a picture of your unit circle on your iPad, um, sorry, I got those little tangents, so that's okay. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Let's move this one. Um, if you look at the sign, remember the sign is we're looking for an angle measure where the sine is negative square root of 3 over 2. The sines are your y's. The y's are negative here and here. The sines are square root of 3 over 2. You can notice here and here. So the answer is 4 pi over 3 or 5 pi. So we're looking for any answer on the unit circle between 0 and 2 pi. And there you go. That's what we got. There's example two. Let's look at example three. Now when you see lots of different pieces and parts, let's move everything to one side and get it equal to zero. So I'm definitely going to move this and move this. So I get two tangent squared of x plus two tangent of x plus two equals zero. Now, I've got lots of twos there. That's nice. We could probably get rid of that here in a minute. But, oh, I forgot the secant squared. I'm sorry. Well, that turned out much nicer than we want. I forgot to write that one down. Now, when we see that we have two different trig functions, and there's no way to factor it, then we have sorry, to think about... I didn't understand that. We have to think about where... Um, is the relationship happening between those two trig functions. So this is where those uh, that memorization stuff from 9.1 is so important. So one of the things hopefully you have memorized is that the tangent squared plus 1 is equivalent to a secant squared. So when you see multiple trig functions, and if there's a substitution you can do, you want to do that substitution. So I'm going to take out this secant squared, which I know is equal to tangent squared plus 1, and I'm going to put tangent squared plus 1 right in that spot. So I'm going to leave this stuff where it's at. Don't know what that, what's going to happen to that just yet. And in this spot right here, I'm going to put what's equivalent to a secant squared, tangent squared plus 1. Now the reason I put it in parentheses, I put it in parentheses so that hopefully I will remember, and this will help you remember, to distribute. So let's distribute now. So we get a negative tangent squared minus one. And so then uh, there are some like terms. Uh, these two right here are like terms, so we can combine those. These are normal number like terms. We can combine those. So we get tangent squared plus 2 tangent of x plus 1 equals 0. Now, what's really great about that is that is a factorable quantity. Now, I'm going to show you a little trick called u substitution. If we did it for some other thing we did, uh, anyway, but um, let's u equal that trig function, the tangent. And so that would be u squared plus 2u plus 1 equals 0. 
Now, why is that helpful? Well, then we don't get caught up on the trig function. We can look at what the algebra is saying to us. That is a factor of a quantity, u plus 1 and u plus 1. There's only one thing that we have to care about. Where does u plus 1 equal 0 or u equals negative 1? Now, what was u? u is a tangent of x. So now the last step, put your trig function back in and then say where on the unit circle would the tangent equal negative 1? Or what angle measure has a tangent value of negative 1? Well, we've done the tangent before now. Let's, let's, uh, let me pull up the, the unit circle again. <laughs> Here's our giant unit circle. The tangent is 1 in, uh, at the 45. You can't see it there, but that's 40. The square root of 2 over 2. It's positive here and here. The tangent's positive here and here. But it's negative here and here. So that's the one we're looking for. It's negative 1 at... 3 pi over 4, it's negative 1 at 7 pi over 4. So that's our answer. That the angle measure is 3 pi over 4 in the second quadrant or 7 pi over 4 in the fourth quadrant. So that is example 3. You don't have to use u substitution at this point if you factor it to be the tangent uh, of x plus 1 times the tangent of x plus 1, it will work. But this is just a nice technique so you don't get hung up on the, uh, the trig. You use your techniques of algebra first. Last example. Now, the only relationship we have between a sine and a cosine is the fact that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Since there's not a squared in this problem, and the only way to kind of put them together is to uh, find a relationship between them. We're going to use a trick. We're going to square both sides. Now, by squaring both sides, some problems can come up. Uh, even in a square root problem, there could be some erroneous solutions, so we will have to check our work. But that's the first step. Now, if we square both sides, be careful because this side we actually have to physically square, meaning you got a FOIL. So that's the shortcut way to write that. Now when you actually FOIL, you get 1 plus cosine, plus a cosine would be two of those, plus a cosine squared. Now remember I said there has to be some kind of a relationship between these variables, and we have to use substitution. Well, I know what sine squared is equal to. Now remember, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So if I get the sine squared by itself, sine squared equals uh, 1 minus cosine squared. So I can replace that with 1 minus cosine squared. Now there's nothing in front, so I don't need parentheses. So let's do a little replacing here. So we have 1 plus 2 cosine of x plus cosine squared of x. Sorry. Equals 1 minus cosine squared. Now, let's move everything to the other side so we can try to factor it. We're going to use, a, now it's very similar to the tangent problem we saw earlier. If I uh, add a cosine squared to both sides and I uh, subtract 1, I get 2 cosine of x plus 2 cosine squared of x equals 0. Now, this is a perfect candidate for a u substitution. The only uh, uh, thing I see is a cosine, so that's our u. So this is going to be 2u plus 2u squared equals 0. Now, because we did that u substitution, you don't have to, but it shows us very clearly how we need to factor. They both contain a 2 and a u. And then if you factor it, you get 1 plus u. Split it apart. Where does 2u equals 0? Where does 1 plus u equal 0? So we get u equals 0, or u equals negative 1. And we're not done until we put the u back in, and then look at our unit circle. So the cosine of x equals 0, 
or the cosine of x equals negative. Now, we're looking for the angle measure. What angle measure gives us a cosine of 0? What angle measure gives us a cosine of negative well, we have to use the unit circle. So I got my unit circle here. <laughs> Let me make it a little smaller. Okay. So where is the cosine? Let's do the zero one first. The cosine is our x. It is zero here and here. So the answer for that is pi over two and three pi over two. So this one is pi over two or three pi over two. Now we gotta look at where is the cosine negative one. Between 0 and 2 pi, the only place where the cosine is negative 1 is at 180. So that is 1. Okay, so that is our last example. Sometimes if the relationship isn't clear, but there is a relationship with the squared, just square both sides. Okay. So this does require quite a bit of thinking about how the things are related. And then the homework is underneath here. Okay, There's 10 problems. You're just looking for values on the unit circle, which make those true. Let me talk about what you want to do. Uh, here you just use the unit circle. Here I would factor out a sign. So you want to bring a sign out front. Here you can factor out a cosine. Here you want to equal to zero first, and then you'll be able to factor. And then it looks very much like number two. Uh, here move the two. Here move the five and the seven and then the two. Here move that over and then factor out a tangent. Here move that over and then divide by two. Uh, well, uh, for this one, I, this is my suggestion. Let's take this to the other side, but uh, let's start that real quick. Um, let's take it to the other side and make it a cosine over sine. Because you don't want tons and tons of trig functions within one problem because it, it'll you know mess things up. Now what you can do then is you can factor that. Out. Now that's just a cotangent but you can factor that out. And then you get, uh, when you factor that out, you get a cosine of x minus one. Oh, I'm sorry, that was a cube. So you get a square. Now remember, when you undo a square, you have to square root it and put a plus or minus. So that's that one. Uh, move this over and then factor. But we can do uh, some of these together, so. So that is, um, your 9-5.